Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick God. Thank you so much for dropping by. I mainly create web development tutorials here on this channel. And as you already know, today we are going to have a look at the identity framework. So the plan is we will create a Blazor WebAssembly ASP.NET Core hosted project. Why ASP.NET Core hosted? Because with that we get a web API project as well. And in this server project, in the web API project, there's all the identity stuff. And still I want to use Blazor to make a call where we get some user information and also related data of this user. So in essence, we've got uh, the user then, we will also add a new model a superhero, surprise, surprise. If you already are a subscriber and watched some of my tutorials, you know that I like superheroes, I hope you do too. And uh, so we've got this relationship and this is what I wanna, wanna do then, what I wanna implement then. But there are certain steps you have to do up front, really. So I think at the beginning, identity might be really overwhelming. It was for me too, because you got lots of tables you have to update the database or create a database with a migration again lots of tables then there you've got a data context already you've got the application user model and if this is completely new to you all this stuff the authentication stuff authorization stuff and so on then this is simply too much i think and with this tutorial now i hope that i can help you walk the steps do the steps, take the first steps with identity and hopefully this then will be a lot easier for you. If it is, and if you like this tutorial and really learn something, then I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. It does make a difference. Thank you so much. Don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want to get a notification as soon as a new video is online. Also, really interesting maybe for you is the newsletter if you subscribe there you get these videos here earlier in your inbox and you also get early access to upcoming online courses like the dotnet developer bootcamp where we will cover the backend side of uh, .NET six or seven let's see application also the front end with blazer and also now since you guys like angular maybe we will also add a chapter with angular and also git and devops so lots of stuff coming there if you're interested maybe the newsletter is something for you and one more new thing i created or i'm still creating a course regarding youtube tutorials and online courses in general so i get lots of feedback from you guys that you want to know how i create these tutorials how i create my online courses and now i'm doing or i'm creating a specific course for that so i'm not really programming related not development related but if you're interested it's called the online course lab and i'm doing this together with my wife who's also creating online courses so if this is something for you check out the link in the video description and also maybe you want to subscribe to the newsletter because then you will also get information there but not much main part is still of course web development and programming so don't worry you won't get lots of emails about the online course lab this is just a side project here and the last thing got some tea today thank you so much for all your support guys really appreciate it i love you forever for supporting me doesn't matter if it's coffee or tea or water orange juice hot chocolate whatever it is i love you guys thank you so so much maybe you know the drill boy is asleep and now i'm creating this tutorial this is the the baby phone here it is silent but it wasn't silent when i recorded the the tutorial the actual tutorial so maybe you'll notice but now long story short enjoy the tutorial all right here we are visual studio 2022 we create a new project and we use a blazer web assembly application this template here because i want to show you the blazer client the web api server project where we will see then all the identity stuff and then also the shared project well that's not that important but still we've got it and we will use it for a model that we will use for a relationship with the actual application user the user from the identity um, api then in this case so we call this project maybe blazer identity tutorial great name next and we use dotnet 6 as the target framework of course we configure this for https asp.net core hosted because as i already said it i want also the server project and the shared project with the client project of uh, blazer and now authentication type this is important now i've got lots of tutorials and in my courses i don't use any authentication type here i just 
or we together, we implement a custom JSON web token authentication and authorization system. This works fine, but now we use not the Microsoft Identity Platform, we will use individual accounts and with that we will make use of the Identity API or the Identity Framework, you name it. Don't confuse that with Identity Server. Identity Server uses ASP.NET Core Identity, but uh, here now we are just using the Identity Framework to, well, get a, a, a complete login and register system where users can, um, well, manage their accounts and where you, with your application, can manage a different accounts. And there's lots of code generated then for us and um, files generated for us, as you will see in a couple of minutes. So this is, I think this is the reason why many, many, many people are overwhelmed by identity at first, me included, to be honest. Um, but uh, let's do this together here and then I think I can help you to walk the steps and make this a little bit easier and simpler for you. All right, so we've got our project here. We've got the Blazor Identity uh, Tutorial Client project. So this is typical Blazor stuff. Now I have to tell you, this is not for beginners here, really. I won't go deep into the generated files, the code here. I hope you already have a little bit experience with uh, Blazor and also with uh, .NET 6 Web API or .NET Web API in general, because I won't tell you what are controllers, for instance, or what's the model here, what's the data stuff. I've got tutorials about, in essence, everything that is that is covered here. So, for instance, here you see already a DB context, right? So a database, con a data context database context really where we use entity or where we can use entity framework to access our user data and all the other data. So we do not have to create a data context here by ourselves. It is already here for us and you also see a migration here and this is important in a minute. We also see the user model. This is the application user and then we've got a we've got controllers we've got areas so this is new if you know the web api standard template in general this is now part of identity here good pages here all right and the default program cs with the app settings json and so on now before we go deep into the or a bit deeper into the code let's just run the application and then see what happens, all right? So you see the starting project is the server project. And in a couple of seconds, we should hopefully see our Blazor WebAssembly application. There it is on my other screen. And you see something is happening here. Now this is the default theme of a Blazor WebAssembly application, right? But now we see register and login, for instance. And when we go there, you see we're somewhere else. This is not the Blazor WebAssembly application anymore. You see it here in the address bar. We've got identity account register. What the heck is this? And when you have a look here in your in your solution explorer, you don't see these files. Where are they? Well, we'll get to that. But first I have to tell you and explain that this is it's sad, but this is not Blazor anymore. These are Razor pages or an MVC application that is running on the server. And that's why you won't see this stuff here, actually. It is somewhere here in this API, in this library of uh, identity. So when we try to register now an account, or maybe we try to log in an account, it won't work. And you also can see this here. When I try to log in here, getting an error, what the heck, right? So this is not working, but let me let me try this here now. When we try to register for an account with Tony at stark.com, for instance, and a top secret password. All right, whoops, an error. Database operation failed while processing the request. So what is going on here? already telling you that we have to apply migrations. So we have to build our database first. And now again, when you already know this, meaning you had a look at Entity Framework Core with code first migrations, maybe also relationships. By the way, check out my videos on the channel. I think I will um, display some info cards here. So maybe there's something for you. And if you know this stuff, you also know that we need a connection string for Entity Framework 
And in this connection string, we then see the actual database, right? And let's just have a look again. You see this thing here. Cannot open database, ASP.NET, Blazor Identity Tutorial, Server, and so on. What a crazy name for a database. Well, here is the same name, right? So this is the connection string that is used. And when we have a look at the program CS file here, you already see, or you also see, this is the connection string, right? So by builder configuration, get connection string, then the default connection, this is exactly the name we see here. And we can also see that then this um, DB context, the application DB context is registered here and uses SQL server with this connection string, all right? So this is how the database is in essence connected to the application. It's using a local DB, but in my case, I want to use a SQL Server Express database. Let me show you one more thing. This is the SQL Server Management Studio. Again, did this already on my channel and my courses, but if you also want to use SQL Server, I just want to use it because I think it's, it's easier to see that stuff. Um, so meaning the, the database, and the tables and so on. You can change change the things and uh, well, I, I just like it. So maybe you want to use it too. If so, then please Google for SQL Server Express. Maybe we can do this together. So SQL Server it is. And uh, the first hit here, SQL Server Downloads, just real quick. And then here you see Express. So you can download this thing here. And then there's one more thing, SQL server management studio that's the one and download secret server management studio and with that then you get this application here you can connect to this stuff and then here you see the databases this is a database of my dot jumpstart course maybe you want to have a look <laughs> sorry for the little commercial here but this is something else what we will do now is we will change the connection string so we can connect to our local sql Server Express database, and then we will run the migrations. For that, we also have to install the .NET tools, but don't worry, we will do this together. So first, the connection string. As soon as you get SQL Server Express installed on your local machine, looks like that, localhost, backslash, backslash, and then SQL Express. Now the database name, I'd like to change that. So let's just call this wait. Let's just call this identity DB maybe for identity database. Trusted connection, true. Multiple active result sets, don't need that. So let's remove this. So now this is the database. Localhost, SQL Express, identity DB is the database and uh, trust connection true. So this is our connection string now. And that's pretty much it. Now we could use entity framework, but we also have to install the .NET tools for entity framework. And we do this with the package manager console. Here it is. If it's not open in your case, I think you get it here, view other windows and then package manager console or you've got your shortcut, whatever it is. Then we are here, but for installing the .NET tools, we don't need to be in a specific folder. We have to be in a certain place when we uh, want to update the database and run the migrations. But to install this thing, we just enter .NET tool install dash dash global and then .NET dash EF, and in my case, it's telling me that it's already installed. So what I can do is either uninstall it, or I can also say, please update this, update this thing. And with that, I get the latest version, 6.0.6. Uh, and now to double check with .NET EF, I see that this thing is installed. Great, so this should also be the case for you. And now you see it here, there are three commands available, database, DB context, and migrations. Now to add a migration, we will do this as well in this tutorial here. Uh, we need the migrations command. And then we only need database for creating and updating the database. So for now, we've got the migration file already, right? So there is already a migration uh, edit here, create identity schema. This year, the, the zeros here are uh, actually the 
or when you create your own migration, then it's the date and the time you created this migration. And then you see here in the up method what is actually going uh, to happen and you see lots of tables will be created. ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET users, device codes, and so on. So lots and lots of stuff. And this is what I what I meant earlier when I said that it's kind of overwhelming. So much stuff is going on here and maybe you don't want to, to deal with all that because it's simply too much. And when you, uh, for instance, just want to know how authentication works in general, then maybe just have a look at my uh, JSON Web Token tutorial here on my channel. And in there, it's just one table, right? So it's just one user table and not many properties. It's just an, I think an ID, a name, maybe an email address, and then a password hash and a password salt. And this is everything we need. And here, well, lots and lots of stuff. For instance, when we have a look at the application user, inherits from identity user. And when we go to this definition here, and then to this definition, uh, you already see here as well, we've got phone number confirmed, the phone number, security stamp, email confirmed, and so on. So lots and lots of stuff. But still, this is great stuff. This is used in production in, in, in many, many applications, companies, and so on. So of course, this is great stuff. Just wanted to show you what you actually get with identity here. All right, so this is the up method, creating lots of tables, and the down method will drop all these tables, meaning when you want to remove the migration, roll it back, then this would happen in your database. But now we want to run this migration. All right, so how to do that? First, make sure to change the directory to your project, and then you see the client server and chat folder in my case here. So now we also want to get to the server folder. And now we type .NET EF database updates. And don't get confused by the update term here. This also means that the database will be created if it's not there already. So build started and in a couple of seconds, hopefully we get our database. Let me take a zip of my tea today. All right, build failed, nice. This is not what I expected to be honest. What is that? Build failed use .NET build to see the errors .NET build, and it is telling me can I access the file. Oh yeah, sure. Application is running, so make sure that your app is not running, and then with .NET EF database update, this should actually work. Nice, build succeeded. And you see lots and lots and lots of SQL commands. See here, values are inserted, create table, and so on. So lots of stuff. And now we can have a look at the management studio. We refresh our server here. And voila, there's the identity DB and we get lots of tables, right? So as I said, much stuff, but the most important one for us really, and for this little tutorial, because I want to make this easy for you guys, right click the ASP.NET users table, and uh, yeah, either select to up to top 200 rows to see what's actually going on here, or uh, at the top 200. So select 1000 top, you know what I mean, select top 1000 rows or edit top 200 rows. And with that you see, um, yeah, all our fields here. And now I would say we run the app again and try to register a user. So back to Visual Studio, there we are. And let's do this one more time. There we are, oh, it reloaded this already, okay. So, well, you did not skip the chapters, right? You watched the tutorial from start to now, this certain point here and then you will continue to uh, to the end, right? So you know that I try to register with Tony at start.com and when I now right click this table, execute SQL, there is our user, right? So we can do this again, actually. Let's go to register and then maybe uh, Peter at parker.com. Wait, all right. 
Okay, now it worked, see? And this is important, of course, this app does not currently have a real email sender registered. See these docs for how to configure a real email sender. Normally this would be emailed and now we have to click here to confirm your account because when we have a look at the database here, we see these two users, but email confirmed is now false. And um, for instance, I can click here. Thank you for confirming your email. Now it's true. Oops, this is the baby phone. Hear that? Little guy, just moving around a little. I love him. Um, yeah, this is now true. And when we try to log in now, for instance, first with Tony Stark. Stark.com, password, invalid login attempt, because this is not confirmed. But when we set this to true, this will now work. All right, so we are now authorized as hopefully Tony Stark takes some time. Okay, now it works, great. So this is now how you, well, start with identity, get things going, and you only need, well, maybe 50 minutes to do that. So this is already nice, but as I already told you, when I log out, for instance, and I uh, have a look at the register page. Now, this is something different here. And the question is, where do we find this? So let me go back to Visual Studio and the Solution Explorer. Maybe let's just close this. I already told you that this is somewhere here on the server project. Now, if you want to change the, the the pages here, registration, logging in, and I don't know, change the password and so on, there's lots and lots of stuff you can actually do here, then you would have to use scaffolding, right? So this is the magic keyword here. And I assume if you want to use something like that in production, then you should probably change that and change the look of this thing. So um, how to get there? Well, we right click the server project and then hit add and then new scaffolded item. And then we see this entry here, identity, identity, and then we click add and then we get a bunch of files listed. And then we can even select, do we want to override all the files, get all files and um, change them then or just the registration form and so on. But let me cancel this, cancel this first because this stuff is a little bit tricky. The generated code, well, leads to problems and then you cannot start your application anymore. And to really see the differences and see why it's not working anymore, then let me first cancel this and add this project already to source control, meaning I will create a new GitHub repository. It's public for you guys. And I will uh, add the link in the video description, of course. So Blazor Identity Tutorial is nice. And uh, yeah, this is my GitHub account, create and push. That's great. And now we will add um, one file or all the files. Let's see. Okay, it's pushed. Now right click the server project again, hit add and then uh, new scaffolded item, identity, identity, add. See here a package is installed real quick. And then we get the option to add some files. But first, really quick, let's close the terminal to stop the app. And uh, now after retrieving, yeah, there it is already. As I already told you, lots and lots of files here available for us, status message, confirm email change, and so on. So we can e either choose to override all the files or for this little tutorial here, let's just use this page here, account register, all right? And additionally, you need a data context class, but we already got one. So as you can see here in the dropdown, we can just choose application DB context and that's it. No user class is necessary here. Just click add and then you will see that not only one file is generated, there are actually a couple of files generated for us. And these files, as mentioned before, will lead to some trouble. There you see it, 32 changes. Jesus Christ, that's a lot, right? So. This is what we get here. Now we've got the 
pages and the account folder with the register CSHTML file. So no Blazor here, no Razor component, but the Razor and um, yeah, lots of other stuff. And then you see also the WW root folder with the CSS file, lots of JavaScript, bootstrap and so on. And also a fav icon and this is creating a problem. And then also the program CS also creating some problems because when we now try to run the application, the build has failed. Nice, right? A local variable or function named connection string is already defined in the scope. Huh? What the heck? Well, we have a look here at our uh, program CS and you see here there's the connection string variable and there it is again. Why is that? Well, let's have a look at the changes again here now in the program CS, you see that this is now the generated code that was added for us, but it's not really necessary. So let's just remove it, all right? And then this problem is solved. Now let's try this one more time. Still failing, what the hell? Well, conflicting assets with the same target path, fevicon.ico. Now, what this means is simply that when you have a look again at the solution explorer, We've got our www root folder in the client project with a fav icon, right? And now we also have this thing here also with a fav icon. Now the easiest solution is to just remove this file and we're done. And here now you see the register page. So let's try this one more time. Bill succeeded all of a sudden, that's nice. And now we can go to the register page and let's try to change this thing. So let's open the register CSHTML. And in here now, for instance, create a new account. Do it now. It's amazing. Save that. I think it's rebuilding. Yes, we want to rebuild and apply the changes. And do it now, it's amazing. Isn't that nice? So now you know how to get access to that page and you can, in essence, change everything you want to change with Razor, right? So this is what you need here, but well, maybe you can just use HTML and a little bit of CSS. I think you, you don't really have to know a lot about Razor pages because the uh, actual logic, you can, you can leave the logic here, but maybe just change the design a little. I don't know, whatever you want to do, you can do it here. Okay, so this is just a register page. And again, if you also want to change the login and all the, the other pages, then just add other scaffolded items. I think the, the really important thing here is that you have to deal with these strange errors that uh, some code is generated in the program CS that we won't need. And the uh, actual theft icon is leading to some trouble. All right, so let me let me just push this already, or commit it at least. Scaffolding register page, all right. And now the last thing I wanna show you in this quick tutorial about identity, you know, the first step, if you want more, please, as always guys, feedback, write it down in the comments and then I will uh, do my best to, I don't know, give you a CRUD tutorial for instance, or use, um, OAuth for Google authentication, Twitter authentication, and so on, together with identity. I think this is pretty interesting stuff. So maybe we can uh, do this in another video. But now the last thing, actually what I wanna do is adding a relationship, meaning we've got our users here, the application DB uh, context and the application user here. This is what I wanted to show you. And maybe if you are a loyal subscriber to my channel and watched lots of other videos on my channel, you did, right? Then you know that I like superheroes. So in my other tutorials, I just use something like you've got the, the user and the user can have a list of superheroes. So we've got a one to many relationship here. And to realize this, well, we need another model. So in our shared folder now, let's add another class and we call this class superhero. It's a public class and this simply gets some properties here like an ID, also a name, which is empty by default. Let me just copy this real quick for us. The first name, the last name and the place maybe. So first name, last name and the place. All right, 
And now we add this superhero here to our application uh, user. Let me close this first because we have to run a migration then anyways. So now here the application user gets a list. So prop list superhero and we call this superheroes and by default this is a new list of superheroes and of course we add the reference here to the shared project and now the last step is to also add a db set in our context here so in here now we say public db set superhero at the reference again we call this superhero so this will be the name of our table and we can already set this or give this a set of super hero so we won't get the warning that this is nullable or anything save that and now we can run another migration or add another migration and we do that with dotnet ef migrations at let's say super hero migration All right, and now we should get a new migration file. There it is, superhero migration. And as you can see here now, it gets, uh, or it will create a new table with also an application user ID. And here you can now see the actual relationship. This is the foreign key. The user ID was also added to our superheroes table. All right, so let's update the database again. .NET EF database update. Perfect, so now back to SQL Server Management Studio, refresh the database, and now here in our tables, we see the new superheroes table with these fields here, nice. And I would say let's already add one. So in our users table, we grab this ID here of Tony Stark, and now here, let's just say Tony Stark gets Iron Man as a superhero. I think that fits. And um, yeah, for our first name again, Tony Stark Malibu. And this is now the ID of Tony. And maybe since we're already here, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, new York City. All right, so now we've got at least one hero for every user here. Tony Stark gets Iron Man, Peter Parker gets Spider-Man. And now the next step is to create a get method where we can then get this data of the authenticated user. All right, so for that, we first have to create a controller and this is done here. So in the server project again, we see the example controller, for instance, the weather forecast controller. Right click the controllers folder and go to add controller this time. And here we choose an API controller and this will be an empty one. So no generated code, nothing like that. I just want to use an empty controller here. And this thing is called then superhero controller and the first thing now is a constructor because we need access to our application db context so ctor it is and in here now we write application db context context we need the reference of course and here now control period and then we create and assign the field context and I like to add the underscore here and there. And now we can write our actual method. It is indeed in Tele code, the HTTP get method, public async task, and we return an action result with a list of superheroes. Call this get superheroes maybe 
this is the one and also add the reference here again. I mean, I could use a global reference actually because we are here with uh, C sharp 10, right? But still, let's just continue. And now, why am I doing this? Well, there are certain ways to do, to actually implement this with identity and well, also a certain way to do this without identity. And first I wanna show you the one without identity. So what we're going to do now is we will access the context directly and from the context then directly the users table and uh, then get the the currently authenticated user and from that user then the superheroes. And then the other way is that I wanna show you after that is to use the user manager of identity. But first start with, uh, well, the old way, let's say. To get the user, we again access the context with await context users. And then here, let's say first or default async. We need entity from a core here and we need the actual user where the user ID is the now current HTTP context user. So this is something we get out of the box in the controller. I see it here. This is a claims principle. So in essence, this is the currently authenticated user with some data. And in here now we can use a method called find first value. Need another reference here, system security claims. And here now, almost here now, we actually want the ID of the user and we can get that with claim types, name, identifier. Now, again, if, you never, if you've never seen this stuff, the claim types and what actually is a claim and so on, then this might be too much. But in essence, this just means that a user that is authenticated and that is, uh, well, doing a request to the web API, has some claims, meaning the ID, the name, the email address, and so on. Also roles, so regarding authorization, this is then interesting. And to actually be able to get this user, we have to add one more thing, and this is the authorized attribute here. So authorized, authorize, and uh, also add the reference, Microsoft ASP.NET Core authorization. And uh, with that, then we uh, make sure that this can, this controller can actually only be called by authenticated and authorized users. And uh, yeah, then we get this user object here. Now let's try that. First, we check if the user is null, then uh, we return uh, not found. And if we have a user, yeah, this is exactly what we need. We return okay user superheroes and now to be able to call this we also have to add some code to the client and now this is also well actually i would have to explain this a bit more but um let's let's uh, just try this so here in the index eraser component what i want to do is first i add the code block and if you're familiar with blazor then you know that we've got three lifecycle methods and one of them is on initialized and we can use the asynchronous one and in here now this simply means that when this component is loaded we well we run the code that we will write here in a second and what I want to do is now just make a call right for that we need the HTTP client we can inject the HTTP client here with add inject HTTP client and then simply HTTP for instance. And now down here, what we can do is we say var heroes is await, almost await HTTP and then get from JSON async list super hero and then the actual URL, which is API superhero. And we add the async keyword here and also the reference again. And with that now on initialization, we are making this call, all right? So let's save everything 
and try that. All right, application is rebuilding. Let's go here. And now we have a look at the network tab. We get an error here. That's correct because it uh, the application is trying to make this call although we are not authenticated yet. We will also change that and uh, this is just HTTPS related stuff. Just ignore that for this tutorial. But when we now log in with, for instance, oh, see that responsive, responsive design, this is nice. So now we log in with Tony at stark.com and then the proper password, we at least see that there's no error anymore. Here's our call in the network tab, but we have no superheroes. And that's correct because we did not include them. So let's do that real quick. And you will get why I did this that way. So first I was waiting to include the superheroes and now I'm doing this. So now we will actually include this relationship uh, to the superheroes. Is it rebuilding? I don't know. Did it superheroes? Again, yeah, it did. All right, this is nice. So now we get Iron Man. All right, so this is one way to get the related data. We've got our user. We get the we get the ID of the actual user by using the the context user and so on. So this is one way. But let me now show you another way using the user manager. So people would maybe say with more experience with identity that you should definitely use the user manager to access the user. So let's just try that. And uh, first we inject this thing. So user manager application application user we call this user manager and we need references again so first ASP.NET core identity and then our models and again let's create and assign the field here all right and uh, at the underscore here as well and now the, let me first just comment this out and var user is now await user manager. And then we've got a couple of methods here. We also get user async, but this did not work in my case. Maybe you know why, but what you can also do is find by id async. And in here now we can actually copy this and we're done. That way we also get the user save that application is rebuilding i guess so yeah it was reloading and now it's again empty and this is why i showed you the uh, include method or the uh, this this call here first without the include method and then with the include method because here we have exactly the same problem we get the user objects but we do not get related data but of course, there's a way to fix this. And this way is actually here in our application DB context. There's this great method called on model creating. So we override this method again. Overrides on model creating. That's the one. Make sure to use the, the base method here. So based on model creating builder. This is really important. Otherwise, it won't work anymore. And now we can say for our application user, we always want to include the superheroes. So builder, entity application user, that's correct. Navigation, and then superheroes auto include. We save that. It is rebuilding, I hope. Yep, it is. And now you got the call and we also get the hero here and now when we log out and do this again with uh, Peter Parker for instance Peter at Parker.com and the password it's making the call and here is Spider-Man isn't that nice so this now works and the very last thing I want to show you, when we go here again, we see this error. So why is that happening? Again, 
because in our client project here in the index razor we're doing this call no matter if the user is authenticated or not but of course we can change that now that's really actually lots of authentication related stuff in uh, blazor that you might need to know uh, to understand this completely but uh, the magic keyword here in uh, blazor is the authentication state provider and well as the name implies it provides the current authentication state of the user and what you can use then in blazor just real quick we've uh, got our main layout here for instance right and also what we have is the app razor file and here you see the component cascading authentication state and then authorized route view not authorized and also authorized in another component login display for instance right so here we've got the authorized view and with all that we just to make this quick with all that we can give this application the current state of the of the user so is the user authorized or not and in this particular case here this is a, a nice example with the authorized view you can also decide what you want to display when the user is authorized or when the user is not authorized and you've already seen that you see hello and then it's all you also get the http context or the authentication state in this case uh, with the user and the name and if the user is not authorized we just display the register and the login link for instance right so we can make use of that but we are not in the html here we are in our code block so we have to access the authentication state provider which is also built in here in this complete solution with identity so let's have a look at the index razor again and uh, to make use of the authentication state provider we have to inject it similar to the http client so add inject and then authentication state provider let's just also call this authentication state provider and uh, now down here what we can do is we can actually write our user is await authentication state provider get authentication state async user and then identity and with that we can ask if the user is not null and the user is authenticated in this case we make the call save that so rebuilding and reloading and now we are not logged in we do not see the call here right so i Let's do this one more time. Reload, no call, all right. And now when I log in with Tony, for instance, and the password, we log in. And now we should, yeah, here's the call, right? So let's remove this again, reload. And here's the call. All right, so this works. And I hope this was a, well, good, quick first introduction for ASP.NET Core Identity. And let me push this as well. Further implementations, maybe. All right, this is actually the uh, relationship. Let's just call this Edit Superheroes. All right, and we also push this stuff. All right, so make sure to check out the link in the video description and then you also get the complete code. All right, that's it. I hope this makes things a lot easier for you. If so, please give me some feedback. I love your feedback, guys. I love to see your comments. And again, if you want to see more, meaning maybe doing the complete CRUD stuff with Blazor, the web API and identity and so on. And also um, third party authorization, authentication with Google, Twitter, GitHub, I don't know, whatever you need, then and we can also do that, of course, in another video. I think this is really interesting. So if you want to see that, please write it down in the comments. And apart from that, if you learned something, I would really appreciate it. If you click the like button, subscribe to my channel. 
bell icon to get a notification about new videos. Thank you so, so much, guys. Also, again, the newsletter for these videos here earlier in your inbox, upcoming online courses, and now maybe also interesting for you, the online course lab. But in general, please let me know if you want to see some information about creating tutorials here on YouTube and online courses, that kind of stuff. So maybe this is something I can also do on this channel. Won't be much. Don't worry about that. The main focus should really be web development and programming and stuff. But um, I, I, I get these, I get asked these questions. What microphone do you use? What camera do you use? What software do you use? How do you script all that stuff? And well, this is of course covered in the online course lab, but maybe I can also do this on this channel here as some tutorials about that stuff. So if you want to see that, please let me know. And uh, the last thing again, thank you so much for all your support, guys. I love you forever. Awesome tea today. So if you want to support me too, check out the links in the video description. Everything is there in the video description. So thank you so, so much for watching. If you want to see more tutorials like that, you can either choose to write it down in the comments for a new topic or check out these videos here on the side and watch another video and another one and then binge watch all my tutorials. That would be nice. And uh, then I think we can get to know each other a bit better, a bit more. It's late. So again, thank you so much for your time and I hope I see you next time. Take care.